By far the biggest mistake that I see React developers make, especially beginner React developers, is that they store the wrong information in state. Now this won't actually break your application, but it'll lead to lots of problems and bugs in the future that are really hard to find the root of unless you understand the proper way to store state. And today we're gonna to talk about derived state and how to handle it because most beginner developers do it wrong. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name is Kyle and my job is to simplify the web for you so you can start building your dream project sooner. And today we're gonna to be talking about derived state in React. And this is actually based on a blog article I wrote a couple years ago. All the concepts are still completely up to date. So if you prefer like a written version of this, you can check out this article right here. But today I'm gonna to show you an actual video version of what I'm talking about. So first you can see we have quite a bit of code to start out this project. I'm gonna explain exactly what's going on so you understand it. This is just going to help explain the point that I'm talking about. So on the left here, all of our code is in this one single function app component here. And all we have in this app component is two pieces of state. We have a users array, and this contains all of our users, which have an ID, a name, and an age. And then we have this selected user. So over on the right-hand side here, you can see we have an increment and a select button. So when I click select, all it does is it selects a user and it puts it at the top just like that. Now, if we scroll down a little ways, you can see the HTML for that. We have our H3 at the top for our selected user. And then we're just looping through our users, printing out a row that has their name, age, and then a button for incrementing them and selecting them. If we go to this increment function, all it does is add one to their age. So if I come over here for Kyle, click increment, you can see the age increases by one every time. And then select user is super straightforward. It just takes the ID, finds the user in the array with that ID, and uses that as our selected user. So let's just refresh our page over here so we have the blank default data. And as you can see, when I was playing around with the app, it looked like everything was working fine, but there's actually one huge bug with this application that's really hard to see unless you know what's going on. And that's that we're storing our user, our selected user here, which is derived state. So when we update our user in our array, we're not actually updating this selected user. Take for example, Mike here, he's 54 years old when I selected him. And if I click increment, you can see his age is increasing down here, but the age up here is not decree and not increasing, sorry, until I click the select button again. And that's because whenever I select a user, I'm storing the user here as our selected user, and that user is not the same user that's in our array. They are two different instances of data that are supposed to both be referencing the same thing, but they're referencing different things. Now there's lots of different ways where you could be storing derived state. This is probably one of the most common where you're trying to take a single element out of an array, such as a selected element, but there's tons of other examples where, for example, you have like a filtered list of items and you have a search query that you need to store. Instead of storing the filtered list, you would want to store the search query. In our example, we don't want to store this full user because if the name changes in our user array, we want to make sure we take that into account. Or if the age changes, for example, all we want to do is store a reference to that user by storing the actual ID of the user. So to change our code, it's really easy. Instead of storing a selected user, we're going to store a selected user ID. So I'm going to change both of these to stay ID here. Down here, I'm going to store the selected user ID, which is just the ID we pass in right here. And then if we just scroll down a little ways, this will just say selected user.name, selected user.age, but we don't have this selected user variable yet. When I save, we're gonna get a bunch of errors, as you can see. So what I need to do is I need to come up here and I need to get our selected user. So we can just say const selected user equals users.find where the user.id is equal to our selected user ID. There we go. Now, if I save, that'll get rid of those errors. And if I select Kyle, for example, and click increment, you can see both of these numbers are updating at the exact same time. And that's because this selected user right here is a piece of state or a piece of data that we need to have for our application. But this piece of data can be derived from our state. For example, it can be derived from this selected user ID and our users array right here. So we don't want to store this selected user in state because it should be derived from our other pieces of state. Anytime you have state that can be derived from other pieces of state, such as this selected user here, you want to make sure you do not store that in state. Otherwise, you're going to have two pieces of data that both need to update at the exact same time, and that's really difficult to keep track of in React. So a lot of times you're going to run into bugs, which are hard to find, and then those bugs oftentimes get pushed up to production where your users have to deal with them. So this is a great way of avoiding that problem. Now there is one minor problem with this though, is that there's a small performance impact because now every single time our app component re-renders, we need to filter our list of users to find the correct one. And if our list here had thousands and thousands of users, that would be very slow to perform. 
So this is where you can actually take this one step further and use the use memo hook to memoize this and make it more performant. So if you're unfamiliar with the use memo hook or really any other React hook, I have a completely free React hooks course linked down in the description you can check out that'll cover this hook for you. But for example here, we just need to import that use memo hook and we wanna wrap our selected user in that use memo. So we can say use memo and this use memo is going to get this value right here. And we wanna update this anytime our users array changes or anytime our selected user ID changes. So now essentially all this use memo does is say, hey, every single time our users array or our selected user ID changes, rerun this function and get us a new selected user. Like I said, this is really important if our user list is really long, for example, or if we have a bunch of other state in our application that's changing. For example, if we have like a theme variable that's changing, we don't want our entire selected user to get updated every time our theme changes. We just wanna use the same one from the last render. So the best way for you to find this particular bug is just look at your state and ask yourself, is any of my state storing the same information twice? In our case, this user's array was storing our users and our selected user was storing a user as well. And they were both storing the exact same information. So when we upgraded our age here, when we incremented it, we needed to increment the age of two pieces of state instead of just one. So this is where you can run into that derived state bug. So if you see that, just realize that this is your problem and try to think what can I store in my state that is going to make it so that I don't have that duplicate information stored. And instead I can just derive that information every time my component renders. And if need be, I can wrap it in a use memo if it's got some type of performance problems. And that's all it takes to drastically improve the quality of your React code. Now, if you wanna take your React skills to the next level, again, I highly recommend you check out my completely free React Hooks course. It's gonna be linked down in the description below and covers every single React hook you need to know. With that said, thank you very much for watching and have a good day.